We're going to start in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Real Estate Social Rockstar Show, where we introduce you to the greatest agents, the greatest coaches, the greatest marketers who are there to help you and give you tips to help grow your business. Today, we have a special guest on the line with us, Lisa Archer. Hey, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks so much for joining on the show today. You're welcome. Um, today, I'm going to give an introduction to Lisa in a second. I just want to let everyone know the exciting thing we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm really excited about it. I told everybody to, to watch this. Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not you should be doing lead gen. And what that means is, let's say you don't like doing lead gen. Let's say you don't like cold calling to generate leads. What do you do? Do you have to do it to succeed? Let's talk about that. And the reason we have Lisa here that's going to talk about that is for a couple of reasons. Number one, Lisa is a top producing agent. Number two, Lisa is a fantastic coach and coaches a lot of agents to success. Uh, reason number three is Lisa runs a really great big team that's extremely successful. So she's one to answer that question. And lastly, one of my favorites, Lisa is also a mompreneur and she is a mother who not only manages a family life, but also a successful business life. So obviously she does a lot of things. Lisa, thank you much, very much for joining us here. You're um, welcome. It's my pleasure. Um, so Lisa, did I miss anything? I know there's so much nope. good stuff to say about nope, you. That's it. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So uh, the, just, hardest, the hardest of those three things, though, is uh, definitely being the CEO of my house. <laughs> I I can't imagine. So I you know I'm married. I have a wife. We, I have a daughter. I have one on the way. Um, and I could not imagine um, you know, running both shows. Uh, my wife definitely runs the show at home. So uh, so kudos to you. You're something special. <laughs> um, really, I I think any 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 woman who is both running the household same thing for man if a man like you know doing both i i can't it's it's uh you're born with a gift so so cool uh, um so um with that being said i have question quick a couple of quick questions just to give people a little bit of your history how long have you been in the real estate business uh this year is my 10th year and you can see years. that i am at my house and i am at home being the mom and my neighbor has decided to come outside and do his yard <laughs> Is that well, obnoxious? I, Can you hear it? I, I don't. I don't. Oh, We're good. good. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so, so 10 years. Now, yeah. when you started, did you start with the team? Did you start by yourself? Give us like a, a very brief overview of like, you know, kind of where you started, how you got to where we you are, and then we're going to delve into, do people need to lead generate? Do okay. people need to go find leads? CNN version, I was in the banking industry. I live in Charlotte. So I was in the banking industry. I was a manager in a bank. I decided that was not going to be uh, my passion and I um, left the banking world. My dad had just gotten into real estate a couple years prior. He had gone to Keller Williams. Um, he needed somebody to help start helping him because he got in in like 2004, which was great. Um, I got in in 2006, of course, which was would have been 10 years ago. And, you know, stuck a sign in the yard. We had more business than we could handle. Um, and he really didn't have any systems around it. So I came in and literally it was um, an ISA. So it was inside sales agent before that term really existed um, and built some systems and models eventually took over the sales side. Um, and then we've grown it from there. And so, so tell the, me, yeah, can you describe your business now. And first of all, you guys call yourselves live love introduce, you know, you feel free to tell okay. people who you are. Um, so our company is live love homes. Um, we started our hub team is in Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got expansion locations in other places now including central New York, which is Syracuse, um, and Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, Chicago, and um, um, a new one opening in Alabama. Cool. And then we've locations that we are getting close to um, naming um, our regional director in. So that's literally what it, you know, where it's gone to. Gotcha. How many agents are now within this entire expanded team? Uh, to date, uh, 13. And probably by next week, we'll be 15. And then by the end of the year, 20. Fantastic. So you're growing quick. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so if I could ask you, um, 
when you bring in people into your team, um, what are what are the the things that you tell them are are most important, or, or how how do you basically um, how do your new team members get business? Like, do they do they start knowing people? Do you only hire people that have a big book of business? Like, how do you or do you do you hire new brand new agents to your team? Well, so so we've gone both directions. We've we've we have some agents who have been in the business for you know twice as long as I have. We have some agents that. Um, are brand new and we're getting to teach them from, you know, teach them from scratch. Some of the things that you can't teach someone is grit. You can't teach someone to have good culture. You can't teach someone to have ethics. I can teach someone real estate. That's, that's easy. I just can't teach them the other things. Those are intangibles. Um, everyone. And then the other thing I would, I tell them is you have a sphere. They're like, Oh, I don't know anybody. Even if you just moved here. Yes, you do. You have a sphere and I, I, I can go in and I can show them you know, look at your phone. Who would um, refer to you if they were sitting at Starbucks and heard somebody having a conversation about real estate? Who would say you need to know Lisa? Who are those people? And then who do you know through those people? And I can show them your database is your business. And it's really one of the few things that few things that matter. You need to have ethics. You need to have culture. You need to have grit and could, you know, get up and go in and keep, and, you know, keep moving. And you have to have a database. So that, and that's where the lead generation piece is important. So new agents are coming in and they're joining your team and you're talking to them about a sphere of influence. Do you require agents that are in your team to go out and cold call uh, the yellow pages, so to speak, or, <laughs> or to buy leads from Zillow or things like that? No. So we're way, we're more strategic than that. We've got it. I've got an inside sales team. We have, um, two outside sales agents who call FISBOs and expireds and um, call our database. So like we've got 33, 34,000 people in our database and we actually call it our data bank because it's our data bank, our bank of business for the future. And if you don't mm -hmm. love on it and nurture it and add people to it, it's going to die. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to treat their people They're they're You know, I, I love when people call it lead generation. We like to call it opportunity generation. I don't feel like, you know, I, nobody wants to be called a lead they want to be treated as a person. This is a relationship business, right? So yeah. we, we are outside sales agents. They call FISBOs, they call expired and they basically are not even selling. They're not selling real estate. They're literally selling an appointment to talk to one of our expert agents. And that's literally their goal is to set an appointment for them to talk to our agent. And then our agent has to qualify or disqualify that appointment. If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes, that makes complete sense. So you'll have an agent that is sitting there calling for sale by owners. Does that agent also go out show properties or does no. that person just? No, their, their, their job and they love it. Can you is describe their schedule. Can you describe a schedule and a job of someone that is purely opportunity generating? Okay. Um, nine to four with, with several breaks in the middle because there's no one in the world that you can chain to a desk just to have phone calls all day. Um, they're literally just going through, you know, one Mondays, I think is FISBOs, Tuesdays is expireds, Wednesdays is our nurtures, Thursday, they're circle dialing around open houses that we're having over the weekend. And then Friday, I think they go back to, um, it might be nurtures again. We have, with that many people in your data bank, like you, you can't help but need to be calling nurtures every single day. Um, and then, um, the agents, what they do, the new, even new and or seasoned, um, they get a, the same kind of list every single day that our lead generation director um, sends them via email, sends them a list every single day with who they can call. And then they're rec and then it's up to them to continue to keep up with their nurtures and their tasks and the appointments that we've set for them. Um, so it's really quite easy to you know generate business given everything that we're giving them. Gotcha. So just to make sure I want to repeat that to, to see if I understood you correctly, you have people that are there calling for sale by owners and scheduling a, if they find a for sale by owner, that's really serious, looking to sell, would consider an agent, then they'll put them in touch with one of your agents that will then go out and schedule an appointment and go mm -hmm. meet with them. Yep, absolutely. And that, that agent that goes out to go meet with them, that listing agent, does that person also show homes? Uh, they can. I've got, uh, let's see, in, I'll just give you Charlotte, for example. 
we have one of our buyer's agents that's been with me for um, starting her seventh year now. Like she started, it was seven years ago or six years. It's in over seven now or over six now. Um, she probably takes two listings a year and they're all from her, from her sphere. Gotcha. She does not an agent. She's amazing, amazing, amazing buyer's agent. Um, but when her past or her clients for life, as we call them, call, she's in, they say, we want to sell and buy something else. She's going to immediately go over, stick the sign in the yard, <laughs> find them their new house, get it under contract. Um, but that doesn't happen a lot. Gotcha. So then let me ask you. So let me ask she you. She passes this. it off for listing agent. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, so going back to our original question, which was, does somebody need to generate leads, and we'll change the terminology for the rest of this thing, <laughs> I love your terminology. Does somebody need, they're a new agent, right? Let's say they don't start in a system like yours where you have people cold calling FISBOs for them, right? Right. Or, and, and so that's where they start. Traditional, typical agent joins the business, they're new, they move from a new area. Um, do, do you think they need to go out there and cold call? Do you think they need to go out there and you know use Mojo and start calling everybody in the zip code saying, are you looking to sell? I have a buyer, so on and so forth. I think they need to be strategic because I think a lot of what agents, or especially new agents and even seasoned agents do in this business is they do the roller coaster because they don't lead generate. So if you opportunity generate today, you can look at your calendar three months from now and you should have a closing. You opportunity to generate tomorrow. You should look at your calendar three months from tomorrow and you should have a closing. If you don't the next day, three months from now, you're going to be able to put a big fat zero. And that's what agents don't understand. They do not, you know, from nine to 11 or whatever time period you say, it needs to be in the morning because life gets in the way. Real estate, as you would say, gets in the way. You have closings blowing up and inspections and this and that and this and that and clients calling. After, you know, if you, if you start in the morning and you don't, and you don't do it in the morning, you'll never do it again. Like you will, there's no way you're going to put it back in your schedule. So you need to do that every single day. So you don't do the roller coaster and new agents. I don't care if you're, um, if you have, if you think you have no database, you think you have no sphere, look again, make that list of your top 10 to 20 people who would refer to you. Um, even if you sold vacuum cleaners, what I, you know, whatever your past is, you've got people, there are people who will refer to you, start calling them. And then go through the list of people that you know through them that would also refer to you. They may not like walk through fire to get, bring you a referral, but if somebody asks them, who do you know that sells real estate, they would say your name. So make those list of people. Become purposeful about building relationships with them and letting them know what your goals are. And then ask any agent in your office if you can hold an open house for them and do it big. Door knock, circle dial around the neighborhood, invite anybody that you know, and if you're door knocking, hopefully you're going to show the other people in the neighborhood, hey, do you want to pick your new neighbor? And oh, by the way, do you, do you need to sell? Or do you know anybody looking to get in this neighborhood or looking to get, or that might want to sell? The fastest yeah. way to get a new client is to door knock and introduce yourself to people. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. So then you get, you know, that if you get a buyer from that open house or you get a seller from that open house, that's just how it builds. Continuously do that. Go from one success to another. Success leads, leaves clues. So just continue to go back to what worked before. And that and there's no way you can't be successful in this business. So for everybody that's listening now, listening to the future, hear this on a podcast, uh, a quote you just said that I really love, so I'm going to repeat it, is you said calling people, you said circle dialing or whatever you call it, which basically for those who don't know what that means, it means when you have a listing or you want to talk about a property, call everyone around that property, make a circle, right? A radius, call around it um, and ask them if they want to pick their new neighbor. What that means is, do they want to help you find a buyer? Do they know anyone looking to move? And it's just a, a very cute, nice way of saying, hey, we have a listing. Do you know anyone you're looking to buy it? Um, much because nicer most to people, say. Most people want to pick their neighbor, especially if you've had a crappy one. Yeah, that's fantastic. So <laughs> let me ask you, um, you know, when you started, like, are you a, um, are you a cold calling type? Are you comfortable blind calling on the phone? Are you more of a network person? What kind of person are you just so I can, you know, just evaluate this a little bit? Naturally, I'm a, I'm a much, okay, so I'm a high eye, so to speak. You can obviously tell that I'm wearing camo and bright and my hair is pink. Um, 
so I am not, I would much rather be in front of them. And I hear that all the time. Yet we know that if you're make if you're actually making the phone calls and doing the actions that, and it, it's not sexy, it's boring. Making phone calls is, bo is about as boring as going to the gym. But if you do it for enough time and you start getting the, uh, getting the results from doing the actions, you're going to keep going and then it's going to feel weird not to do it. That's, you know, most agents and most people in general, it, it's back from health or diet or whatever it is. And lead generation is the same. Opportunity generation is the same. You don't do it long enough that it, that you get out of the boredom and you, you hit the success. You get bored. You're like, this is not working. You give up. So get a little bit of grit and keep moving. Keep doing it until the results come from the actions you put in. So if somebody doesn't start in a system where they have a, so when you hide, bring in a new agent, right? I assume you're not having that agent circle dialing necessarily, right? They're not calling. Well, that's, no, that's not true. So they, they're, they're immediately um, given the opportunity to do open houses on the weekend. So they get, we, in our marketing team, they make cute door knockers. They get to go um, door knock. Um, they get to, ha they hold the open house. And then on Thursdays or Fridays, um, they, we pull a list of the circle dial list for them literally just to invite the neighbors half the time they've already seen their door knocker. Yeah. But if they, ha if they haven't, then they get to invite them again. And sometimes they're circle dialing outside of the neighborhood where they did not actually, sorry, it's one of my children. Um, they, they didn't actually do, um, the door knocking of, and, um, like what we had one today, um, that it was a natural move up neighborhood. So on one side of the door knocker, it said, do you want to pick your new neighbor? And I think on the other side, it said, we just sold this house in 13 days. Well, the house that was sold in 13 days was, was in the lower price range. And it's a natural progression move up neighborhood for the house that we're holding open. It was a two, it, I, I called it a two for, it was a two for one. Um, we got to knock and tell the good news. We sold, just sold their neighbor's house in 13 days. Who else do you know that wants to move? And oh, by the way, come to our open house. That's, that's, that's fantastic. So from what I'm hearing from you, even though you have a designated person that's calling for sale by owners, and even though you have a designated person that is calling probably expires in your marketplace yep. or whatever it may be, um, you still have the agents that are there. They're still, they're the ones that are still doing the, the dialing or asking if you want to pick your new neighbor. They're still hitting the phones and opportunity generating. They're not. So from what I take it is if you're for sale by owner, you know, ISA person, um, and your expired person, if they kind of disappeared, you'd still be getting business because your agents themselves are still required or expected to go out there and generate their own business. Yeah. Cause we, we, and you know, we give them the tools. So we use Mojo and we have Vulcan. We absolutely love, um, we love Vulcan. Um, so we have the systems we use curator. We've got, you know, we've got an amazing data bank. So, um, there, there's endless opportunity for them to, Pick a list. Say if you just want to call your nurturers, you haven't called, you know, you haven't called your nurturers in a month or two months or whatever. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. Um, we, we can pull the list. We can upload it in a Mojo Vulcan and they can just start dialing. There's, yeah. you, there, you cannot run out of phone numbers. You cannot run out of people who have raised their hand. It's not like, I mean, and it's not even like other than the circle. And I think the circle is different because I think the message that we're giving them is, is one of two things. Either we just sold their neighbor's house or we're inviting them to an open house where they get to pick their neighbor. It's still coming. In my opinion, both of those calls are easy and they're coming from contribution and it's showing the neighbors, look how uh, much they're willing to do to sell my neighbor's house. So if I need to sell, who am I going to go to? The guys that knocked on my door, the guys that called me three times, I'm, I'm going, calling those guys. So can I ask you to describe what you mean? Because I love, I say this all the time, and I'd love to hear from your perspective. When you're saying they're, you, you're saying they're easy calls, and they're coming from a place of contribution. So first of all, once again, just to repeat, what are the two kind of calls that you said were the easy calls, and what do you mean by contribution? So the circle dial calls, I think they're easy, and the reason I say that is because I'm not asking them to buy anything. I'm not even asking them to sell. I'm calling them with good news that their neighbor's house just went under contract in three, four, five days. Um, if I can tell them it went at full list price, yeah, that's fine. I typically, like, I'm not going to go that far. If they ask, we might get into that, but probably not. Um, and then I, you know, that's good news. Do you want to know what the price, you know, do you want to know the price of your house? I'm coming from contribution and offering them something. I'm not asking them to do anything. If I'm calling about an open house, I'm offering them the opportunity to pick their next neighbor. You know, we've had we've had um, a couple of listings lately that our seller 
was probably not the best neighbor um, <laughs> given the <laughs> condition of the yard or the, you know, or the house. Um, so I, and though both of those cases, the neighbors were extremely excited to help us pick a new neighbor. They, they loved the fact that we asked that. Um, and that's kind of where the whole philosophy came from when they got super excited that we asked that question and they, you know, they're like, well, you know, I, I think, let, let me call around, let me see, you know, people yeah. want, they want their friends to move in their neighborhood in most cases. Right. Um, so that's where those two, that's where those two things came from. And it just became really easy an easy phone call. The agents don't get like super freaked out about it. And, um, it's, you know, it's not salesy. Yeah. I think that's, uh, you blew my mind a little bit just now because <laughs> I think I, for me, words are, are important. They're just, that's just how I am. Like, I'm, you know, I like, I, I like to communicate. I like to talk. I'm a video guy. Like words are important to me. Yeah. Um, and so when you, when you describe calling people from a place of contribution and now I'm thinking, Oh, well, if somebody owns a home, it's their biggest asset. Like, you know, think of it like it's stocks. Like they, they care a lot about it beyond the fact that they love their home. They, they care about the financial aspect of it. And you're calling them because you're letting them know that it is now more valuable or at least letting them know the value of it. Um, and, and you're not leading with, do you want to sell? You're not <laughs> leading with, Hey, I want something from you. Right. Um, you are now turned in from a salesperson that cold calls into a really nice person that's sharing information of value with others with no necessarily you're not necessarily going to get anything out of it at least not immediately not, not not no not not usually yeah so I, i'll give you a good example we've got an agent um her name's rhonda and she's been on our team for about five years and uh she she started on our team in charlotte about two and a half years ago or so she had to move to syracuse um her husband he, he has a son and um long story short She's living in Syracuse now, um, and she's been in the business for 20, almost 20 years. And I told her for, I was like, Rhonda, you're going to love Mojo. You're going to love Mojo. You're, she's in. She fought me on it for two years. I mean, she's probably watching and saying, yeah, she's right. Yeah, she's right. So for two full years, she fought out. And, you know, she's like, no, I'm not. No. And she's never got around to it. Well, the first time she did it, she like set two appointments. That's fantastic. And then, um, hold on one second. You can't do that. I can hear that. My son, my husband just walked outside with his drone. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm outside for a reason. <laughs> Why are we watching you from the drone? That would be so cool. If we could be talking to you, <laughs> just to be flying visually above you, that would be so cool. He's got one of the one, like he's got a race drone. So he's testing it because he's going to race it this weekend. Sorry. Um, so Rhonda, back to Mojo. So she's literally sitting in Syracuse and she started Mojo dialing, I would say a good 60 days ago. Yeah. She put her second listing on the market this week. Yeah, that's fantastic. In Charlotte. Charlotte. Not Syracuse. She lives in Syracuse. Her second listing went on the market live. Uh, goes live tomorrow in Charlotte, North Carolina. And she lives in Syracuse. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I, so, so first of all, for those who don't know what Mojo is, Mojo is a dialer. It is a software you can log into. You can have it dial three numbers at the same time. It increases your call rate, which simply means you can call more people in a shorter period of time and it's constantly dialing for you. So you can't get lazy and decide you don't want to dial a number. It keeps on going. So, yeah. so I've been using Mojo, you know, on and off for, for, for many, many years and it's fabulous and fantastic. Um, and we were just, I was just on it a couple hours ago with one of the, <laughs> So it is really, really fantastic. Um, and um, uh, so somebody, uh, you know, one of the comments that we have now, because right now we're on Facebook Live, um, and Shannon, she comments over here, and I'm gonna read it out loud because I think it's important and I'd love to hear you address it. Shannon says, this info is so important because we are about to hit a shift and many agents right now don't have, don't know how to fish because the market has been so good. Amen. So, so just for those who don't know the terminology, when she says shift, what she means is that the market has been really great. And for those of you who weren't in the market when it crashed, you don't have the perspective. Things have been really easy. It's been giving candy to a baby. Um, and the market is beginning to slow. We all see it beginning to slow. Um, and so the reality is when the market changes and it starts going down or whatever ends up happening, those agents that have the skills and know what they're doing are pro their business is going to actually grow. Yep. Okay. M businesses grow when markets shift. 
say that again, businesses grow. So good agents take market share when the market shifts because people want good agents. Bad agents don't know how to handle the market changing and they lose business or they don't know how to find business. They're out of here. So with that, <laughs> so, so with that, said, that's, so can, that's, that's when I learned how to lead generate. I was forced to learn how to lead generate during the shift. Yeah. And I'm thankful for it. That's, when, one of, so, that's one of the few regrets I have about this business is that I didn't learn how to lead generate quicker, faster, um, more efficiently in the first couple of years when business was so good. I had to learn it during the shift. Yeah. I had the same thing. Or I, the I, crash. I, I don't even know that I'd call it. It wasn't even a shift. It was a crash. <laughs> it was a crash. Yeah. yeah. I had one of my best years during the crash. Um, and, and just something to put out there, and, and I know you would agree with me, the reasons why people do so well when there's a shift or a crash is because when there is a change in the market, consumers are scared and nervous and you have the greatest opportunity to reach out to people. Um, as a matter of fact, I was going to, um, I created a little message and then I didn't put it on Facebook because I just didn't want to go political at all, but we just had elections and I don't want to get into details of politics. I don't care to talk about it in public, but, but the, the one thing that is, that is, that I said was, Whenever you have an election, especially now where there's so many feelings about it, it is such an amazing opportunity for real estate agents. It's the best thing that could happen to a real estate agent. It doesn't matter who wins the election because consumers are, regardless of who they voted for, they don't know how thing, what's going to happen now, regardless of who they voted for. And so they would love to hear from you reaching out and getting your perspective. How are the markets going to, how is a real estate market going to react? They can go onto the TV right now and go to any business channel and all they're talking about is how are the markets going to react, right? right. Nobody's, mm -hmm. nobody's, there's no real estate show talking about how the market's going to react. So it's a huge opportunity and that's what happens when a market shifts. Everybody wants to hear from you and if you're not scared to call them, you, you can really build a lot of relationships. Absolutely. So, so let me ask you, if you were an agent now jumping into the market, into a new, let's look at a new agent, new agent. You just moved to, I don't know, let's pick another neighbor. You, you moved to New York City, okay? <laughs> the completely different market, you, you know, and, and it's, you know, let's presume that our markets are the same, okay, that we work the same way. Um, and you moved here. You didn't have any people that you knew here necessarily, um, but you were a hungry go-getter and you weren't going to stop for nothing but excellence. Um, what would you do? How would you start? I would ask I would ask the seasoned agents in my office who have multiple listings wherever I wanted to like start making I, I would you would have to create a farm right or you're gonna have to create that first place that you can get your first listing and that's that's really what you've got to look for you've got to go find some listings right um, hold an open house then door knock or um, sit at Starbucks there's you know one on every corner and talk about real estate, have conversations with people about real estate, offer to give them a free CMA on their, on their home, um, ask me how the market is today. I mean, especially now when, like you said, it's un people are uncertain and they would like to know what the market looks like today. They just, you know, they may not know. Um, give them the opportunity to find that out. And just like, coming from that place of contribution, doing the open houses, door knocking, um, meeting new people, meeting as many people as you can, going to events where um, there's possible people, you know, everyone, has the opportunity, no matter who they are, to be a buyer, a seller, an investor in real estate, or want to start a career in real estate, or know someone who does. Every single person you ever touch or talk to or see or feel or, you know, are sitting next to you anywhere has, has that same opportunity. Just talk about it. I'm not asking them to do business. I'm just going to talk about real estate. Do you, would you have like any kind of like goals or certain number of people every day you needed to talk to or new people you would add if to your you're database? brand new, you need to have 20 to 30 to 50 contacts a day because that's going to, it's going to take that many to start setting up. Can you say that again? I would say 25 to 50. A Easy. day. Contacts. Yeah. Like you have to have a conversation with someone or a text message or, you know, I, I don't necessarily consider, I don't consider email a contact unless you sent someone an email to set an appointment and they responded and said, hey, let's meet on Tuesday at two. Like may, I might set that as like, I make that as comment. That's also an appointment. So you're just going to have to say it takes 50 to get one appointment. Then you need to do 50 every single day. So you have an appointment a day. Gotcha. Like right now, it, we've gone from what used to be like 20 to 21 contacts to set an appointment. It's, it's upwards almost to 30. 
30 con, it, you know, and that's how you can see the shift is what was used to be 20 is now 25, 27, 30 mm -hmm. to set the same appointment. Gotcha. So when you say contacts that people need to make 25 to 50 contacts per day, are you talking about new people they need to meet, like go into Starbucks and go say, Hey, I'm walking in here and I, I, I want to get five here and then I'm going to go circle dial. I'm going to get another 20 there. Is that what you mean? Or contacts you means communication, like calling your sphere of influence. As long as you're actually setting or having conversations and people are sending you referrals, even if they're in your sphere and that's what you're asking them, you're giving, telling them what your goals are. You're telling, you know, if you hear of anybody looking to buy, sell, invest, start a career in real estate, send them my way. Let me have a conversation with them. I, you know, that's all I'm asking is to have a conversation with them. I'm not going to try to, you know, I'm not necessarily going to try to sell them anything. Um, New people, you need to add about 20. If you have no data bank, you need to start adding about 20 people a day to it. You've got to build it somewhere. It's not one of those things that if you build it, they will come. You've got to do the work. Gotcha. That's that's fantastic advice. So getting back to our original question of, <laughs> yes, do you need to regenerate? <laughs> regenerate, do you need to opportunity generate in order to make it in this industry I would think the answer is yes. Yes. Good. You just got to look at the way you're doing it. Yeah. If you don't I make don't... phone calls, then don't do it. But I promise you it's the fastest way. And if you're give, using the right script <laughs> and having the right conversation and using the right words, it's easy. Yeah. It's um. so what I like about what you said is, 25 make this it's very simple 25 to 50 contacts every day find the way to make those contacts the easiest way is to set aside a few hours a day call mojo and start calling people you'll just very easily you can build in your schedule you can you know you can easily predict it if not you know you, you go to a networking event it might be a little bit more fuzzy in terms of how many people you're going to meet each time so you may actually need to spend more time to meet the right. same number of people you could on the phone right that's an interesting thing that you said right there it might be easier to go to a networking event. Go for it. Just know you're going to have to spend more time than than somebody that's just going to hit the phones and say, "Hey, let me let me let me share with you some information about a home that just sold in your neighborhood." Absolutely. Well, that's, that's fantastic. All right, great, um, Lisa. This has been really awesome. I like you how you just keep it real and you just say it like it is, and um, and and that's fantastic. Um, and. Um, Lisa, if anybody wants to reach out to you, contact you, um, if you're comfortable with that, would you mind sharing your information? Um, the easiest way to contact me is Facebook. I mean, it, there's 200 billion people there, right? <laughs> that's where we are, <laughs> 2 billion people. We need to, that's where, that's where I'm at. Um, uh, LiveLoveHomes.com is our website, um, and you can easily send me an email through that. And there's a great blog there as well. Yeah. And I'm going to be, I think I'm going to be in, uh, in your neck of the woods next week doing oh, an expansion class oh fantastic yeah. awesome maybe we can meet up that would be cool. awesome well thank you very much for joining everybody this has been the real estate social rockstar show my name is michael meyer you can connect with me on facebook on snapchat on instagram michael meyer nyc brokerage is meyer real estate and uh thank you for participating go out there go meet people go make calls go networking events 25 to 30 people a day let us all know and what i would love and i'm sure what lisa would love is if you go out there and you go make 25 to 50 contacts tomorrow send us a message post on your wall hey i did it do it every day i would love to have like linked to 500 different walls every day that 500 people agents made 25 to 50 contacts a day i would love it i know lisa would love it everybody go and do that thank you Thanks, very much Michael. Lisa, for being here bye